the slight downhill, we're going to be hitting uh, a nice downhill section where you will definitely be wanting to tuck. You're going to find that sitting up, even pedaling as hard as you can, you're going to be slowing yourself down by the drag. So you want to get into a harder gear, especially if you're on a tri bike that doesn't have uh, the Shimano Di2. You're going to be wanting to uh, shift into a hard gear so you're not fumbling with your gears, reaching up to your base bars, you're rocketing down this hill. Be prepared that the second time through, you may have be catching up to people, or for slower riders, there may be people passing you on your first time through. So you want to make sure that you're riding safely and you don't want to get any high speed collisions down here. So when you roll off the hill, you want to pedal to make sure you're maintaining your momentum, but be very careful because after feeling fresh from tucking, there is a tendency to really spike and really go too hard. Um, you, want to want, you want to make sure you're keeping the momentum, but you're settling back into your rhythm, that nice pacing that you want to maintain for the rest of the race. So along the rolling hill sections of Black Sage Road here, you really want to make sure that you're staying on top of your cadence, uh, making sure you're keeping that nice rhythm, keeping a steady effort, and you're staying in that arrow position. You, uh, there's a tendency on some of these rolling hills to sit up a bit, um, but you want to make sure on these little pitches that you're really carrying your momentum over the hills, through the hills, um, and just staying nice and efficient. So here we hit another steep pitch, and like I was saying, it's a great time for nutrition. You know, you can pull out those gels, the aerodynamics don't matter, there's no penalty. It's a great time to fuel. It's gonna keep your effort level in check. I lost a uh, water bottle ejected on me at the front of the bridge while I was out here for the Oliver Olympic last year. So you really want to make sure that your water bottle cages are very well tested. Uh, if not, your local bike shop, so the bike barn, has plenty of good options that are going to keep your water bottle in place. But also more importantly, you really want to make a backup plan for what happens if you do lose a water bottle. Because you never know, you could hit a pothole by accident, you could fumble one in an aid station. You want to be very well prepared so that it's all thought out. You don't want to make any mistakes. I really like to think out as much as possible during the races. What if it goes wrong? You know, if you lose your goggles, what are you going to do? You know, if something's missing in transition, what are you going to do? You know, or if you do, like I said, drop a bottle or something, do you go back for it? Or do you keep on? Do you have a backup plan? So really make backup plans, make a list of potential problems and the solutions you're going to have. You always make better uh, solutions when you're calm as opposed to being in a stressful situation like Here's in a race. Here's where we're turning on the highway. You might want to stop for the sit in that big chair on the last lap, but keep going. One big thing when you are on the highway, sometimes people are looking behind them, thinking about people passing them. The best advice is just like when you're out on the road, you want to stick if you think you're going to get past a little bit to the right and just hold your line the people behind you they'll pull around you um, but don't be looking around because when you're looking around that's when you could go either way and potentially cause a crash so there's often a headwind along this section of the highway Sometimes it's a good idea if you have a big motorhome or a semi passing by you. They create a lot of turbulence and really reduces uh, the air friction. Sometimes it's a good idea to use that as an acceleration zone. You can kind of get yourself up to speed and carry that momentum and really get into a nice rhythm along here. So we're approaching the turnoff. Uh, it's kind of a strange one. It comes at kind of halfway down this hill on a downhill so you want to make sure you're reducing your speed you're not getting fooled into going too fast because it is a sharp right and this is where 
The officials like to hang out because people are notorious for crossing over the line. It's a little faster too to stay on the right side because you have a bit smoother pavement. And like I said, there is no yellow line, but you want to stay on the right so you don't get a penalty or a DQ. Uh, that's especially important around this left-hand turn that's coming up. And once you are at this point off the highway, you probably have about two kilometers until the second aid station. If this is your second lap, it's going to be the last aid station you hit before you get into T2. So you want to make sure that you're downing any bottles before that and taking on the supplies that you might need. When I raced here in 2010, it was around this point that uh, I was really starting to feel a bit of discomfort in my shoulders and was having trouble staying in the arrow position and it would cost me a lot of time sitting up. So you really want to make sure before the race that you have a position that's not only comfortable, but comfortable for sustaining over the 90 kilometers or if you're doing an Ironman, the 180. So at this point, if you're an Ironman athlete, you should feel like you're in a, uh, a Lazy Boy recliner. It should be that comfortable. Yeah, right. Make sure the dismount line doesn't sneak up on you. And it is a little bit of a downhill, so you're not too worried about pedaling too hard coming in there.